Welcome to this short tutorial where I will step you through the approach that you will be taking for the final assessment, assessment three for ETL 401. This assessment is in three parts. Use the marking allocation to plan your time accordingly. You can see that part A is worth 10 marks. Part B is the core of the assessment and is worth 30 marks. And part C is also quite significant and worth 20 marks. In this assessment, you'll be able to demonstrate all of your learning about the inquiry process by investigating a range of information literacy models. You'll use a model to develop a specific task in a specific school setting within the school curriculum. So you'll see that this assessment is extremely practical and authentic and real to life. You'll develop an introductory lesson plan and an outline of learning in all subsequent stages of the process. The unit of work must be from the Australian curriculum or your country's curriculum if you're not in Australia. It can come from your education department or the IB program if you're part of an international baccalaureate school. You'll design a unit of work based on a chosen model of information literacy. These are discovered in length during the course. Let's look closely now at part A of the assessment. Part A is the background of the task. It's worth 10 marks and requires you to write 500 words plus or minus 10%. In this section, you'll choose one of the many information literacy models that you have studied to provide a broad framework for the inquiry unit. This section is only 500 words long. That's not very many words. So you need to keep it brief, but specific and succinct. You need to give details of the school con context, the learning needs of the students, the le level of the subject area and the topic that you are going to be working with. You then need to state the information literacy model that you have chosen and you need to articulate which model it is and why you have chosen it and not any other of the information literacy models available. This assessment is an inquiry task which incorporates an information literacy process. And it's important that you are able to articulate why you have chosen this particular model and not any other. What is unique about the model you've chosen for your context? The methods of working include what you will do. So for example, face-to-face -face teaching, blended learning, inquiry circles, and jigsaw models. These are just some examples. And the resources are what you might need to create. So you may need to create pathfinders, reflection sheets, note-taking performers, or other resources for the unit to take place. Please note, you do not actually have to create these resources, but you need to know what you would need to create if you were to teach this course, this subject or this module. As always, please use the criteria from the marking sheet to guide your work and keep you on track. Read the criteria column and then see how it is going to be met at each of the different standards. Obviously, we all would love to get HDs, but not everyone is going to receive a HD. And in fact, it is not necessary to pass the course with HDs. And sometimes your personal situation may mean that you are aiming for a different goal and that is perfectly okay but use the scale to give you focus and to understand what you need to do. In order to choose the topic and stage for your inquiry unit, you'll need to think about a few things and you have many options. Consider at first inquiry units that are already being taught in your school, especially if you're currently practicing as a teacher or as a teacher librarian, this will make the uh, assessment much more authentic and applicable. Um, and there's no need for you to go out and find any other sources. 
However, if you're not in a school or if you can't identify something suitable, you can go to the Australian curriculum, your state authority, for example, NESA or Ed Queensland, Scootal, the IB website, if that's applicable to you, Education Services Australia. There are many different places where you can find uh, inquiry units that are already somewhat formulated for you that you can adapt to your context. Share your discoveries in the discussion forum because what you discover might be useful for someone else and vice versa. Then you have to think about choosing your information literacy model. An information literacy model describes the steps that users take in their move from ignorance to understanding when involved in an inquiry task. Using a model allows teachers and students to be able to break down the inquiry task into chunks so that it is more uh, easy to work through. Although it's important to remember that the steps or chunks of the inquiry process are often overlapping and often iterative. It is not a linear process. You don't move through the steps and never return to the previous step. Like any learning, it's flexible, but the model helps guide the entire process. There can be some confusion about the use of the term information literacy model versus the use of the term inquiry learning model. There are some differences, but a lot of the time these terms are used synonymously and you'll find this as you do further research into IL models or inquiry learning models. Basically, information literacy models derive from information studies and from the TL and library world. And that's why we're going to refer to them as information literacy models. Although some of the models may also be known as inquiry models. The focus is on information seeking in an IL uh, information literacy model, whereas the focus in an inquiry model can also be on a holistic project, solving a problem, creating a solution, and the information literacy part in a pure inquiry model may be minimized. So you can see that the information uh, literacy models such as Kultau's information search process the guide and inquiry design, the big six, I learn, fossil, these are all information literacy processes. Whether or not they use information literacy in their name, because they highlight information seeking as a key part of the learning. Whereas project based learning, soul, and eight ways of learning are more inquiry learning processes because information literacy is, is a smaller and minimized part of the process. Why choose a model? Please think about and consult the work of Kath Murdoch because she really writes a lot about the inquiry process of which the information literacy model will be an important part. A cycle of inquiry helps us plan and teach with intention. When it's understood, it pushes us beyond simply coming up with activities and it challenges us to think about how skills and concepts can be developed and deepened over time and in a cyclical iterative manner. It gives us some shared meta language also to describe the learning that is happening with students and colleagues. There are many different forms of inquiry and you will see these terms being used in the literature. Basically, we're going to be looking at most likely a guided inquiry unit of work, because this is where the knowledge is new to the student, but there's still an element of teacher direction within the inquiry. Once we reach open inquiry, the outcomes are completely unknown and negotiable, and it is almost completely student driven. And this is quite rare in a K to 12 setting. Think of open inquiry more as a research task that you would complete at university where the outcomes may not even be known to the uh, lecturer or the teacher. Of course, in the very early years, confirmation or structured inquiry is often used as well. So it really does depend on the age and the capabilities of your students, but you'll find that most of the units that you discover will be examples of guided inquiry. 
When we look at the stages in an information literacy or inquiry model, you will see that they generally form the similar pattern, even though they use different terminology. And I've included this table here just to give you an idea of comparing different models and the different languages that they use. When it comes to choosing your information literacy model, there are many different ones and you can are free to choose whichever information literacy model suits your students the best and suits your context the best. If you go to this uh, link here, it will take you to a curated list of just some of the many information literacy models, some of probably some of the most common ones. And this might be a good starting point for you if you're completely new to uh, information literacy models and what they look like and where to find them. The most important thing to remember is that common to all inquiry learning are, cer are certain features. There's an equal emphasis on process and content and genuine curiosity, wonderment and questioning are encouraged along with student voice. It's, very, it's important in inquiry to build upon prior knowledge and for the learning to be guided by significant concepts and essential questions. Guided inquiry and most inquiry learning that happens at school is very much not a case of teachers saying, off you go students, do your own research and come to me at the end with your response, which is the popular misconception of inquiry learning. Learning in inquiry involves students actively in constructing their understandings, but if anything, the teacher is more involved in planning the opportunities for these discoveries to take place. And this allows for reflection, metacognition, and the deep thought that is highly valued in inquiry learning. Now, talking about all the different models of information literacy, there are some exciting new developments in New South Wales to do with the information uh, fluency framework that's being uh, developed and led by June Wall. Now, the only, you don't need to use this information literacy, uh, information fluency framework. Certainly it is your choice, but I just wanted to mention it because especially if you're in New South Wales, this is something that's going to hopefully become more and more uh, of use in the ways that teacher librarians work initially in New South Wales, but hopefully it will extend beyond that. Eventually, after the 2022 release in New South Wales public schools, uh, others will start to use this framework. And if you'd like to learn more about it, I would encourage you to look at the uh, SCAN, uh, New South Wales Teaching and Learning, Professional Learning SCAN link that's here, which will direct you to the articles about this particular innovation. Another really popular and very highly researched uh, information literacy model is Kultau's information search process and its system model guided inquiry design. Basically, Kultau developed the information search process uh, to track the way an individual researcher thinks, acts and feels when they are proceeding through this, the information search process. It's got quite challenging terminology, and so it's probably one that you are better off using for your own understanding of information, uh, the information search process. But from this information search process has developed the, the guided inquiry design, which is used by learning teams to create and carry out inquiry units and has um, a lot of a lot of practical guidance for implementation in schools and K-12. They're basically a very similar model. They draw on the same research, but the guided inquiry design process is the interpretation of the information search process with more of a practical application in mind for schools. I'd also encourage you to check out the guided inquiry Oz Edu blog. Uh, which has been developed by Alinda Sherman and Lee Fitzgerald, who uh, you may encounter in your studies at CSU. There's loads of information here and support for you, and you're welcome to join this if you feel that it will be of use to you.
Let's move on to part B of the assessment, which is really the core and the bulk of the work. Part A is where the decisions are made and the thinking and planning is done. And part B is basically where the rubber hits the road and where you create an overview of the inquiry unit of work and lesson plan. So you're approaching this as an experienced teacher who is now working in the specialist area of teacher librarianship with. The teacher working with you has the subject knowledge and expertise and you have the information literacy expertise. So it's important that you very firmly put your TL hat on, but that you don't forget you have expertise as an educator and teacher. Make sure you review the module content and you have an absolutely clear understanding of the information models. The more you read the literature and review, the better you will understand, and this will inform your work for this assessment and also for all of the work that you do when you're planning with teachers in schools, which is a key part of your role. The more clear your thinking is and your understanding is of these models and processes, the more articulate you will be in the topic. I think you've probably um, experienced how our writing can become less focused and less articulate when we ourselves are vague about a concept. And this is why it's very important that you are absolutely clear in your understanding, because although you have 1800 words, this is still quite a small amount when you consider the amount of content that you need to convey. Use your experience as a teacher to choose the subject level, topic area outcomes and descriptions from your cur curriculum body relevant to where you teach. Make it clear where you are taking these from. For you as the TL, include no more than three elements of the general capabilities of literacy, ICT or critical and creative thinking. Make sure you understand the meaning of these from the general capabilities website. You can choose elements from one, two or all three of these capabilities. So what you're going to be doing in this assessment is you're going to be creating a really engaging introduction lesson, which introduces the information literacy model as well as the learning scenario. And then you're going to create an overview of the inquiry unit in the remaining stages of your chosen model and describe briefly what the students will do at every stage. So the introductory lesson is in detail and then the rest of the mod um, of the unit will flow from there in a slightly briefer form. You'll need to consider what the students will be asked to produce during the learning process. And remember that students in an inquiry learning process are creating evidence of their learning throughout the entire inquiry and not just providing an end product at the end. We are have seeking evidence of the learning that's happening as they go along. You also need to describe how the assessment of the elements of the general capabilities will be framed. So this may take the form of a rubric or an informal discussion, depending upon the outcomes that you have chosen, the elements of the general capabilities that you've chosen, the students you are working with, and the type of unit that you're de developing. Once again, read the criteria very carefully to guide your work and to keep you on track. Now, when you're choosing the content descriptions or learning outcomes, which is from the teacher's perspective, I would encourage you to use the ACARA documentation or potentially state, uh, state bodies documentation if that's been developed and relevant to you, or IB curricula if that's relevant to you. Um, most of you, I think, will probably be consulting ACARA. When you're looking at the TL outcomes, you'll be going to the information about the literacy, ICT capacity and critical and creative thinking general capabilities on the ACARA website, which, for example, looks like this. So you're going to be choosing one of uh, three of these elements from either just one um, 
general capability or one or one from two of them or all three of them. So what does this look like? This is basically an example of how you might present this part. You're going to include the title of the unit and the overarching inquiry question, which is essentially the same thing. In this example, why does the world need engineers? You're going to introduce the guided inquiry unit and then you're going to include the curriculum skills, which is from the, what the teacher is going to be looking for, and the general capabilities. In this case, all three being taken from the critical and creative thinking strand or general capability. So you can see here that you don't need to go into huge detail from the teacher's perspective, and you need just three of the elements from the general capabilities which have been included here. This is a primary example. And this is a secondary example. Here, the inquiry unit is uh, entitled, Have Robots Improved Our Lives? There's a unit overview. There's curriculum outcomes. And they you can see the detail has been included there of where those curriculum outcomes are coming from. In fact, I would encourage even just a little bit more to make it clear exactly what part of the curriculum these are coming from. And again, three elements from critical and creative thinking. Although remember you could also choose from literacy and or ICT capabilities. The final part of the assessment part C develops your reflective practice. And this is 700 words and worth 20 marks. Here is where you're going to critically reflect on your understanding of information literacy, information literacy models, and the role of the TL in inquiry learning. You're going to refer to previous blog posts that you've made throughout the subject and forum posts that you've also shared. So this is why it's important that you continue to share your thinking as the subject progresses and participate with the learning community, because this will make it much easier at the end for you to build upon and express your critical reflection because you'll have evidence of your thinking to draw from and build upon. You'll need to include the URL. You're going to be doing this in the form of a blog post. So you'll need to include the URL for this post on the cover page of your assessment. You'll be able to see from this blog post the progress you've made in developing your understandings over time. Of this 20 marks, you can see that 10 marks is going to be for the reflection and 10 marks is going to be for your demonstration of the understanding of information literacy process models throughout the task. So basically these 20 marks are demonstrating your overall understanding of information literacy. Once again, I draw your attention to the marking criteria to guide you and to give you guidance as to what you are wanting to aim for and how, what you need to include. This, these criteria sheets are what I will be looking at when I am assessing your work. I'll be looking for the different criteria at the different st uh, standards that are described on these sheets. So if you want to know what you need to include, please consult these and read them in detail. For parts A, B and C, you need to ensure that you provide appropriate references, both in-text references and the reference list. You must be drawing on the research literature and professional literature to explain, validate, and present your material. So please don't forget that. This image is uh, hyperlinked and it gives you more practice and information on APA referencing if you think you might need that. To submit your assessment, you need to include a title page with your name, your student ID and your assessment number, assessment number as per usual. You need to include part C, which is the URL of your final reflective blog post also on the title page. Then add part A and B of the information literacy plan and submit these as one document, one word document. So this word document uh, will consist of the title page, which also has your blog URL and parts A and part B. 
it needs to go through East to submit. And because this is a final assessment for this subject, unfortunately, I can't give extensions except in exceptional circumstances because of the policies and the marking the dates required for submission of final grades, et cetera. I need to officially apply for uh, extensions through certain processes and you must require, you must provide evidence and uh, it must be an exceptional circumstance. So there's a little bit less flexibility in due dates for this final assessment. So please keep this in mind when planning and count backwards and leave yourself enough time. However, of course, if you do have an exceptional circumstance or you're not sure whether or not your circumstance is exceptional, please feel free to contact me and I'm happy to discuss it with you. Now, the last few slides are really just for your professional reading and elaboration on the assessment. So there are some articles about collaboration with inquiry learning and teachers. There is advice on developing your focus around information literacy and also about the development of the introductory lesson and the use of the curriculum documents. Now, I would encourage you to read these slides in detail as they do flesh out a little bit more about your approach and give you a little bit more guidance. Please believe in yourself because I believe in you and I know that you can do this. Take your time, work steadily and systematically. Don't forget to ask questions and share your discoveries and resources in the discussion forums. And if you have any issues which are not appropriate to share in the discussion forums and relate only to yourself, feel free to email me at any time and I'll get back to you as soon as we can. No problem is something that we can't solve. Best wishes for this task.